Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us Across the Fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. You may be familiar with the annual running of the bulls in Pamplona, Spain, but how about the running of the belties in Charlotte, Vermont? Well, if you think you're excited for warmer weather and being outdoors, imagine how the cows feel. Across the Fence visited Philo Ridge Farm for the unofficial kickoff, or better said, the run-up to summer. This is a great day for the belties, yeah. <laughs> My name is Ed Pitcavage. I'm the land and livestock manager at Philo Ridge Farm, and uh, we're in Charlotte, Vermont. Today's the Belty release. Uh, they've been in the pack barn all winter. We put them in right before the new year. They've been pushing on the gates. It was just a matter of time before they would have found their way out here. So uh, they look great. This year's a little later. Last year we put them out on um, May 11th, the year before May 15th. So. Uh, we're, we're about a week and a half later than usual, but um, the ground's firming up. We're, we're you know, in some pretty heavy clay soil, and we've had a lot of rain. We're four inches over average for the year. Um, so they're getting out a little later, but uh, the grass is growing. It's green. It's good, and uh, so we'll, we'll keep moving throughout the, the whole season. They'll move every single day, new grass every day. And they won't be back in the barn until after Christmas, for sure. <laughs> These cows are grass fed and they're grass finished. What does that mean? We don't use grain to uh, fatten them up. They, we harvest a little bit later, uh, 28 months, 26 to 28 months is our harvest window, which uh, the Belt of Galloways grow a little bit slower. Um, so we focus their last, I mean, their whole lives, the steer, we focus on providing them the best grass that we can provide. Um, and then definitely the last 90 days, we focus on really high quality. We save super high quality pasture. So they're, we're trying to get up to words of two plus pounds a day that they're gaining um, before their harvest date. These ladies look a little, they look really big. That's, uh, th that's not just because they're built to Galloways. They're having babies. Next week, uh, they'll, be, they'll be having calves out on grass. Um, this time of year, it's a little bit questionable with the mud and everything, but that's the benefit of moving them every single day. We try and keep it as clean as possible. Belties, they're going to shed. They, they grow a really thick double coat. Uh, so they're shedding right now. That'll fall off, and in a month or so, they'll, be, they'll have their sleek uh, undercoat going um, and calves on their side. Our thanks to the staff at Philo Ridge Farm in Charlotte for letting us take a run at that story. And also a tip of the hat to the video work of our Rebecca Gollin and Keith Silva. Moving on, we head south to Bennington County. That's where we found a family-owned business that's been in operation since 1889. Wilcox Dairy is Vermont's oldest ice cream maker, and thanks to UVM Extension, they're sure to keep things cool for years to come. Keith Silvas tells us more. Working on Sweet Street in East Arlington, Vermont, has its perks. What makes good ice cream? The formulation, the ability to freeze the product very quickly. Wilcox's premium ice cream touts itself as Vermont's original ice cream. The Wilcox family has been making and delivering ice cream in Vermont since 1928. But this family business is older than that, and they've got the paperwork from the Equinox Hotel in Manchester to prove it. It is a purchase order for the hotel. They wanted broilers, but had enough eggs. We've been in the business since 1889, and my great-great-grandfather started peddling as a value-added product, eggs and chickens, uh, lamb, sheep. Um, even to the point in 1892, he was trading my aunt's tuition at Burn Burton Academy for lamb because they had students there. Today, Wilcox's premium ice cream makes 80,000 gallons of ice cream each year. It's all made by hand and it happens very fast. Christina Wilcox is the company's chief financial officer and ice cream maker extraordinaire. I'm picking up a pint, I'm filling a pint, I'm setting it down and having another pint under the point of filling in sometimes two seconds. I have to use my peripheral vision um, to, to know that the containers are next to me and the person next to me is able to take that from me to put the lid on. Um, it requires an immense amount of teamwork. Um, everybody has to, has to flow together and know what the next person needs. Um, I, you know, my, my team is very well trained and I don't usually have to ask for anything. They know exactly what I need next. Before being made in East Arlington, 
Wilcox's premium ice cream was made at the family's dairy farm in Manchester. In 2001, a fire destroyed the ice cream production and distribution facilities at the farm. To keep their family business going, the Wilcoxes had to keep making ice cream, which meant miles, lots of miles. After the fire happened, my dad and I started traveling to, to other locations wherever we could rent time um, in, in a facility. Um, we brought all of our packaging, all of our raw materials. Our uh, mix was made for us to our recipe. We would um, make what we used to maybe make in a week in a whole day. Um, there were many weeks uh, over many years that that day uh, exceeded 20 hours from start to finish. It was important for uh, our family to continue our own private label, so we traveled uh, into Massachusetts, uh, into New York, uh, into northern Vermont to uh, produce our Wilcox label. Uh, and my daughter and I and my son, we'd get up at four in the morning, leave and go make like uh, 12, 1300 gallons of ice cream, load it on the truck and come home, um, and then off offload it into our storage units that we had at that time. So for us to have this facility today, it's like going from a Model T to a Cadillac. To maintain its freshness, ice cream has to be hardened off or frozen fast. Freezing ice cream quickly and efficiently requires what's called a blast freezer. There's only one slight problem. The floor of the freezer has to stay warm, at least warmish. We can freeze like 12 to 1600 gallons an hour from plus 27 to minus 10 in less than 12 hours. It's like in the winter time when it goes out and it gets really cold and it gets minus 20, the frost goes down on the ground. So now we have to protect the floor in our freezers from the frost permeating it down into the, to the earth because it will heave the floor. To solve this frosty problem, Howard and Christina began working with University of Vermont Extension agricultural engineer, Chris Callahan. I got involved with Wilcox through a referral from John Ryan at the Vermont Agricultural Development Program, VADP. I spend a lot of my time working with farms uh, on refrigerated storage and uh, other food processors on various forms of refrigeration and basically environmental control, temperature and humidity control. Um, so there was a, a pretty clear fit when uh, first talking with Wilcox. The, the difference being this is much colder. The system Callahan designed from scratch is simple and uses something there's plenty of in a warehouse, air. We have a room that is at below freezing and we're really dealing with conduction of heat into that room away from things that we're hoping, hoping to keep warm, like moisture and soil. Um, and so what we're doing is taking air from this uh, storage warehouse storage space and pumping it through the floor underneath the freezer to prevent it from freezing. This unit right here is one fan that is part of the floor uh, frost prevention system. It's driven by or controlled by a thermostat. And this thermostat has a sensor that's deep, in the, deep inside the room uh, under the floor. Um, and it's sensing the temperature of the floor. And when it starts to get below, uh, say, 45 degrees Fahrenheit, we kick this fan on uh, using the thermostat. And that, what that fan does is bring this room temperature air, maybe it's a 55 to 60 degree air, and it brings it through the floor to bring that temperature back up to prevent it from freezing. It's a pretty low tech, low energy, or energy efficient means of preventing the floor from freezing. Chris Callahan and UVM Extension was in, just invaluable in that process. This was what you call a design build. Um, we didn't have it all figured out before the day we started. We were figuring it out as we went along. This kind of challenge fits with the service UVM Extension is tasked to provide Vermonters. A project like this really exemplifies my um, vision of what Extension is, is all about because this is really putting research-based knowledge to use. Um, this is an ice cream company that was looking to understand how to prevent their floor from freezing. There were large-scale uh, commercial, commercially available options that for a number of reasons didn't fit for this company. The key question is what are our options and how do we understand which one is best? The Wilcox family has been making ice cream for nearly 90 years. And there have been challenges along the way, for sure. But what matters most to them is that they keep making ice cream and keep their family business going for generations to come. This summer when we were making ice cream, there was, there was 
five of us making ice cream in three generations. So it's really very rewarding to be able to tap, pass the torch uh, to other generations and to show them some of the things that I have learned and I'm sh I have already found there's things they have learned that they incorporate. So this is very exciting and very important to us to do this. It's perseverance that's tattooed on our foreheads. So um, it's about being a part of something that is um, much um, larger than yourself. It's about, you know, um, um, it's about continuing in um, what generations before you um, um, persevered through um, to, to make this even possible. Determination and dedication are good qualities in a family or a business. And if you're a Wilcox, you could even say they're sweet. In East Arlington, I'm Keith Silva with Across the Fence. And a footnote, Wilcox Premium Ice Cream is the exclusive supplier for UVM's dairy bar, and the milk used to make the ice cream comes from UVM's herd of cows at the University Farm. That's our program for today. Once again, thank you for joining us Across the Fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Music